Today, in this action-packed episode, I am going to show you the tools that you need to get your GMRS radio up and running. And I will show you some extra tools, some optional tools that only real radio dorks would ever need. And I will explain the difference between the tools that you need and the tools that you may want. But first, allow me to make two things abundantly clear. Number one, Everything that I am going to talk about in this video relates to GMRS, GMRS radios, and GMRS frequencies. I will not be talking about or referring to ham radios or ham radio frequencies. And number two, I am not an expert at using any of the equipment that I'm about to show you. I do not claim to be an expert. I do not claim to know everything, but I do know enough about these things to show you the basics of what they can do and to give you a high level overview of the devices. So if while watching this video, if anyone should get an uncontrollable urge to leave a comment and declare, declare that I am not qualified to talk about, get the fuck. First up on our journey of spending money is the humble SWR meter. And allow me to say it right now, an SWR meter is probably the only thing that I will be showing you in this video that most people will actually need, need. This particular meter is the Farzo Meter 2000, which is a highly customized Surecom SW102. It costs about $60, affiliate link below. And this one, like any good SWR meter, measures SWR. And basically in very simple terms, SWR is a ratio of how much power is getting out of your antenna versus how much power is going back into your radio. In order to get the maximum amount of FARs on your radio, you always want the maximum amount of RF electricities coming out of your antenna and not going back into the radio because when those RF electricities go back into your radio, it causes the inside of your radio to heat up and that is not good. It is always best to have all of your RF electricities coming out the antenna and none of the RF electricity is going back into the radio. So in addition to measuring the SWR, this particular SWR meter also measures the power output of your radio and it has a frequency counter to tell you what frequency your radio is transmitting on. It is very simple to use. You simply connect one end to your antenna and the other end to your radio. With your radio turned on and with the meter also turned on, you simply transmit and you will see your SWR reading displayed here in the large number. 1.0021 is pretty much a perfect SWR. That means, as you can see here on the screen, 99.99% .99 of the RF electricities coming out of my radio are going to the antenna. In addition to the SWR, you can see the power output displayed here, and you can also see the frequency on which the radio is transmitting right there, 467.675 hubba jubba hertz. And as I alluded to moments ago, you really do need an SWR meter if you have a mobile or base station radio so that you can test your antenna system. Not just the antenna, but the entire system. That means the cable, the antenna itself, the ground plane, and the mount. Because a high SWR, like three to one or four to one, usually means a bad ground plane or a problem with the cable, not necessarily the antenna. A very high SWR, like 10 or 20 to one, probably means a short in your cable, which would be very bad. And if you did not have an SWR meter, you would not know that. One very important note about SWR meters, most SWR meters are limited in their frequency range. The Farzometer 2000 in particular only works from 125 megahertz to 525 megahertz. In other words, most SWR meters cannot be used on both CB radios and GMRS radios because the frequencies are so far apart. So make sure you buy the proper SWR meter for your use, GMRS, CB radio, or even ham radio. Moments ago, I mentioned that you should always test your antenna system on a base or mobile radio. 
However, sharp-eyed viewers will notice that I did not mention handheld radio antennas, such as what you would find on this particular handheld radio. And that is because it is exceedingly difficult to accurately measure the SWR of a handheld radio, even if you have a ground plane plate, which comes with some radios. This attaches to some SWR meters between the meter and the cable and acts as a ground plane. And that is intended to allow you to measure the SWR on a handheld antenna with a ground plane. However, because on a handheld radio, the radio itself acts as a ground plane and because the radio is different from a plate, as you can see, whatever SWR reading you get using the ground plane plate will not be the same as when using the antenna connected directly to the radio. This makes it exceedingly, exceedingly difficult to get an accurate, correct SWR reading for a handheld antenna. For handheld radios, I don't even bother anymore. Unfortunately, I am not permitted to talk about SWR in any further details because some people keep leaving comments on my GMRS videos declaring, declaring that because I am not a licensed ham radio operator, I am not qualified to talk about GMRS antennas or SWR on GMRS radios or anything technical at all with regard to GMRS radios or antennas. Because apparently, according to some people, in order to be qualified to talk about GMRS radio things like this, I must first memorize the 35 multiple choice questions on the ham radio license test. And then, and only then, will I be permitted by them to talk about technical GMRS things on YouTube. So thank you to all of those experts that keep leaving those comments on my videos and letting us all know this. Because without your stupid comments, the rest of us would have nothing to laugh at. And now we will move from the only one thing that you probably actually need to some of the things that you may want. Starting with a frequency counter. This is the Surecom SF401. It costs about $45, I'll feel it link below, and it will show you the frequency that your radio or any other device is transmitting on, but you don't need to physically connect the radio like I just did with the SWR meter. As you can see, the frequency counter has its own antenna. So all you need to do is hold the radio close to the frequency counter. This one can read a five watt radio from up to about five feet away, and it can read a 50 watt radio from about 15 or 20 feet away. So you get it within range, you simply press the transmit button on your radio and the frequency will be displayed on the screen. This particular frequency counter will also display any CTCSS or DCS tones that the radio is configured with and is transmitting. Now you may be asking yourself, why would I need to know what frequency my radio is transmitting on? And that is an excellent question. And the answer is, maybe you wanna make sure that your radio is transmitting on the correct frequency. Or maybe you just don't know what frequencies are squirting out of your radio. Or how many times have you been trying to talk to your friend from your radio to his radio, and no matter what you do, you can't get them both to talk. A frequency counter shows you what frequency both radios are talking on, and good ones, such as this one, also show you the CTCS tones or DCS tones that the radio is transmitting, which can be very helpful to figure out why the two radios are not talking. The next item on our exciting list of things that you may not need, but you might want, is a spectrum analyzer. Unlike the frequency counter, instead of just showing what frequency the radio is transmitting, a spectrum analyzer can, among many, many other things, show an entire range of frequencies that might be coming out of the radio or just drifting through the air. So this makes a spectrum analyzer very good for checking for spurious RF emissions coming out of your radio, because we all know how dangerous those can be, according to some people. This one is the Tiny SA, and it costs about $70, affiliate link below. Now, no doubt some of the experts will declare in the comments that the Tiny SA is a piece of junk. It's not as accurate as a $10,000 spectrum analyzer. And to that, I would say, yeah, no shit, dumbass. 
This thing costs $70. Only a total moron would be stupid enough to compare this to a five or $10,000 piece of laboratory equipment. But an inexpensive spectrum analyzer like this one is plenty accurate enough for most people that don't feel the need to spend five or $10,000 to check their $100 radio. A spectrum analyzer is also very useful for lots of other things. I just haven't yet figured out what those things are. So to all of you experts watching, make yourself useful for once and leave a comment and let us all know what some of the other good uses are for one of these spectrum analyzers other than just checking for spurious RF emissions. And finally, for the serious radio dork is an antenna analyzer. An antenna analyzer analyzes your antenna system, not just the antenna, but the cable, the ground plane, the connectors, the entire antenna system as a whole or piece by piece. You can find inexpensive antenna analyzers like the Nano VNA, which I do not have, but like the inexpensive spectrum analyzer that I showed you in chapter three, they are not the most accurate and they are not really comparable to the more expensive big boy toys. This is the Rig Expert Stick Pro, which costs about $450. And this one is the Rig Expert AA650 Zoom, which cost about $750. Buy2WayRadios.com sent me both of these, so I will put an affiliate link below. The Stick Pro works on antennas from 100 kilohertz up to 600 megahertz, and the AA650 covers from 100 kilohertz up to 650 megahertz. So either of these would work for both GMRS or CB antennas, and some ham bands. Oops, sorry, I forgot. I'm not allowed to talk about ham stuff because I'm not qualified to utter any of those words. Both of these do pretty much the same thing, but as you can see, the screen on the AA650 Zoom is a bit larger than on the Stick Pro, and it has more buttons, so it is easier and more fun to operate. Both of these are Bluetooth enabled, so you can connect them to your computer or your phone and control them completely which makes it much easier to do everything, especially with the Stick Pro, just because of the small screen. An antenna analyzer would be useful if you like to build your own antennas, or if you have a base station or repeater and you want to squeeze out every drop of FARs possible. An antenna analyzer will give you live readings while you work on your antenna or cable. So for example, we can see that currently my Midland MXTA26, which is just off camera, right over there, is giving us a reading of 1.7 or so to one on the SWR. But if I adjust it or play with it, you'll see that it changes just like any SWR meter, but this can do so much more. I can change the frequency that I wanna check it on. So right now this 1.69 SWR is at 462.550. But if I wanna see what my SWR will be when I'm talking on a repeater, using this antenna, I can simply change to a different frequency. And I can see that this antenna is tuned better for a repeater at 467.700 with an even lower reading, but it does so much more. I can get a Smith chart for the impedance, which is super fancy and cool. I can check the SWR over an entire range of frequencies so I can see where my good SWR is and the not so good SWR is. It can also measure cable length and do all kinds of fancy radio dork stuff. The kind of stuff that some people leave comments saying that I'm not allowed to talk about. Now, as I mentioned way back in chapter one, for most normal GMRS users, a inexpensive SWR meter is all you really need but now you know what all of your other money spending options are. You're welcome.